Hello and welcome to the Ace Destroyer. This video is the first part of the Battle of Ibn Imal. In this part I'll be going through the composition of Sturmgruppe Granit, what they had at their disposal and their objectives for the 10th of May 1940. A full overview of the battle is for a later video, when I will film at the fortress of Ibn Imal itself. The Germans planned four Fallschirmjäger assaults near the fortress for the 10th of May. They were planned at the bridges of Waldwiesold, Vrunhoven and Kahn. The remaining objective was the fortress of Ibn Imal, one of the most sophisticated fortresses of its time. These attacks would be carried out by the Sturmabteilung Koch. The attack of the fortress itself was planned for Sturmgruppe Granit. Sturmgruppe Granit was commanded by Oberleutnant Rudolf Witzig. He had 85 men under his command. The 86-man strong Sturmgruppe would be transported in 11 gliders of the type DSF-230. In order to take out their fortified objectives, mostly being casemates, turrets and various other bunkers, the Fallschirmjägers took hollow charges with them. This was a new type of explosive which could easily take out such fortifications. The Sturmgruppe was armed with around 6 MG-34s, 18 MV-38s, and around 54 Car 98Ks. Every single Fallschirmjäger also carried a pistol with him. Now let's take a look at each trip. We'll begin with the Erste Trupp, commanded by Leutnant Egon Delika. He was the air liaison officer. With him were two NCOs, Feldwebels, Niedermeyer and Pilot Raschke. The other five of the troop were regular soldiers. Trupp 2 consisted of three NCOs in five other ranks. The Truppführer was Oberjäger Max Meyer. There were problems with the glider and the troop was forced to land in Germany. They didn't see action at the fortress itself. Trupp 3 consisted of two NCOs and five other ranks. The third troop was commanded by Oberjäger Peter Arendt. Trupp 4 consisted of two NCOs and six other ranks. It was commanded by Oberfeldwebel Helmut Wenzel, who would get wounded to the head later on the 10th of May 1940, hence the bandage on his head. The fifth troop had three NCOs and five other ranks. This glider was commanded by Feldwebel Erwin Haug. The 6th Trupp was commanded by Oberjäger Siegfried Hallos and also consisted of 3 NCOs and 5 other ranks. Oberjäger Fritz Heinemann commanded the 7th Trupp. Under his command was 1 other NCO and 6 other ranks. 8th Trupp commanded by Oberjäger Karl Unger consisted of 3 NCOs and 5 other ranks. Oberjäger Ewald Neuhaus was in command of the 9th Trupp which consisted of three NCOs and four other ranks. The 10th Trupp was in reserve. It was commanded by Oberjäger Fili Hübel and had two more NCOs and five other ranks. The 11th Trupp was in reserve as well. They too had difficulties and could only land on the fortress at 0.30 in the morning. And this Trupp was the overall commander of the Sturmgruppe, Oberleutnant Rudolf Witzig. The Trupp was completed by two more NCOs and four other ranks. The main objective for the Sturmgruppe Granit was, like I said, the immense fortress of Ibn Imal. In order to take out the whole fortress in the least amount of time, each troop had one objective. Because two gliders fell out, some groups had to take out two objectives. The first troop's objective was the Maastricht II, a 775mm gun emplacement. The second troop objective was the Cupola 120 with its two 120mm guns, but because they had to land in Germany, Trupp 10 took over this objective. Third troop had the Maastricht 1 and the Block 2 for their record. Maastricht 1 was a triple 75mm installation, Block 2 consisted of machine guns and anti-tank guns. The objective of the 4th troop was Minor, an observation emplacement with a searchlight and machine guns. 
the AA positions and Block 5 would be taken out by the 5th Troop. The Block 5 was equipped with a double 75mm gun installation and had a handful of machine guns defending it. 6th Troop had as an objective a 120mm gun cupola, which turned out to be a false gun. Their other objective was the Canal Noor Bunker, with AT guns and machine guns. 7th Troop objective was the most northern objective, a 120mm cupola, which too turned out to be a false one. 8th Troop objective was the twin 75mm gun emplacement of North Cupola and Block 4. 9th Troop objective was the Misud, an observation bunker. 10th Troop had to visit one bunker as objective. This bunker had a triple 75mm gun installed. Because the 2nd Troop couldn't make it, the 10th Troop also took the 120mm gun emplacement for their record. 11th Troop came too late, but were useful in the later stages of the battle in the fortress itself. All paratroopers were carried in the DFS-230 glider. This assault glider had a capacity of carrying 9 fully equipped men and an extra load of 270 kilograms. It was 11 meters long and its wingspan was 21 meters. It was the perfect plane or glider for the job. With the DFS-230, they were able to silently glide their way on top of the fortress. It was also perfect for the Truppen as each Trupp could fit in one glider. In the next video about the fortress Ibn Imal, we'll go through the battle of the fortress of the 10th of May. But I first need to shoot footage at the fortress itself before I'll make the video. I hope you enjoyed this composition and objectives video about the Sturmgruppe Granit. Don't forget to like, subscribe and leave a comment down below.